So <clears throat> the space we have here, it's about 100 feet long, it's about 35 feet wide, and the key feature is actually this floor that we're standing on. So there is a basement underneath us, but the floor that separates us from the basement is about three feet thick. It's very heavily reinforced concrete. And you'll notice that on the floor, there's a grid pattern. There are circular caps every three feet in both directions. And these caps extend throughout the entire space. So we can pop open any of these caps. And what that enables us to do is everything you see in this space can be picked up with the two overhead cranes, unbolted from these holes in the floor, moved around, and bolted down in any other location. So as we walk through, you'll notice this, this concrete column here, for example, it's held to the floor with these six rods. There's a large rod, there's a plate and a nut, and there's a plate and nuts on the ceiling in the basement. And we just squeeze this column. We stretch the rod with a jack, we lock it off with, with the nuts and wrenches, and then the column is anchored to the floor right where we need it. A similar idea with the wall behind us here. So the wall is also it's fixed in place. It goes uh, to a foundation that's, that's over 13 feet below our feet. So it's a very rigid, strong, solid wall. It has buttresses behind it, so it's nice and stiff. And, heavy, and the wall also, you'll notice, has a three foot by three foot grid, and that allows us to, to mount things in the horizontal plane. So in the floor, we can move things around in the, what well, I guess the vertical frames in one plane, and the wall would allow us to move things around in the other plane, and we can do angles in between. So we'll see uh, two examples of tests using each of those. One here in front of us is a concrete bridge column, and this has already been tested, uh, but what we're looking at, the, the cylinder portion would normally extend vertically in a bridge, and it would normally uh, support a cap and then girders, so traffic would be running on top of these columns. Uh, we're replicating the traffic loads with the jacks up top, that's pushing down on the column, which are the forces you normally think about when you think of a bridge, you think of that gravity force that's very heavy and supporting vehicles which are very heavy. But from an engineering perspective, the more challenging forces to deal with are usually the lateral loads from seismic earthquake. Uh, wind, wave loads, impact loads from ships, or even in some cases trains or vehicles. So we have the horizontal uh, jack, hydraulic jack, or actuator is probably a more technical term. Uh, but when the test was being conducted, the jack was extended out, it was bolted to the top of the column, the gravity load was put on with the jacks, the yellow jacks on top, and then the, the black actuator was used to rock this column back and forth. So we would step it in one direction, pull it back to neutral, step it in the other, push it back to neutral. How far are you actually pushing it? We would start in very small cycles, but at failure we would extend almost 16 inches in each direction. Wow. So this is this thing. And there's a photo in the hallway. It sort of boggles the mind when you think about it the first time. The concrete and steel can move 16 inches and not be totally the same. You notice the base is, uh, is damaged, certainly, but it still supports load, it still holds itself up, it still supports uh, the weight of what a real bridge would be after sustaining that kind of displacement. So how 